back. So before we just completely leave um, everything about how we return statuses like we did right here, let's just make into update, let's make a very specific status call that I think is pretty powerful. And before we can do it, let's just start off by actually creating and preparing the update for actual update requests, right? So the update is the put. That's the put request when you need to update information. That's at least what we expect in our REST API. So a put request will send in an ID like I just showed you guys before, and that will be passed right here. But I also need to be able to send in a customer instead of a string. So I'll just put in customer right here, customer, and write customer in the end here, just to give it a good name. So now we have a customer. But <clears throat> when I send this customer, we can actually do some pretty cool validation if you use it the way that um, the REST API is set up right now. Because we can kind of say when you're sending in a customer, the ID you're putting right here should match the ID you're sending in the customer or else we don't have a match. And if we don't have a match, I'm not going to update it for you. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a simple validation that we can do, just making sure before we do any updates, we just want to match the ID of the actual customer with the ID of, um, of the send in ID in the parameter. So let me show you what I mean right here. I'll do an if statement right here and I'll say if ID, that's this ID that we're sending in as the parameter, does not match uh, the customer's ID, right? So if these don't match, there's something wrong. So what will I do? So if something is wrong, what I'll do is I'll return a bad request and just explaining to the customer, or sorry, the, the client sending this, that um, <clears throat> parameter ID and customer ID must be the same, right? So <clears throat> pretty much just trying to explain to this guy that, um, that something is wrong. He's not sending in um, the right value. Now it complains right away because of course this needs to be an actual action result right here. And I can even send back the new, the new customer that I just updated like this. And then I'll just return okay down here for now. We'll get back to returning the actual customer. <clears throat> so there we go. That's, that's all we have to do. Now we can actually get information if the ID is actually okay. Now I wanna make one more validation. I can just in front of this say if um, ID is less than one or, right? Because I also wanna say if this ID is zero and this is zero, I won't be able to find the customer in my setup because the database doesn't allow zero in my setup. I always start at one, that's the first ID in my database. So it's just a validation right here. So let's just try and do this with Postman because we haven't done an update yet. So let's have a look at how this actually works with the put request. So let's jump into Postman. And first I think I'm just going to get all customers just to kind of have some customer to look at. There we go, we have Bob right here. I'll grab Bob because I want to change him and I'll go into a put request, right? And here there's a body just like with the, just like when you use the post. So I'm going to add the information about Bob right here. Now, Bob, we need all the information or else we'll start adding null values to some of his areas, right? So if we, if we by mistake don't add the first name right here, it'll actually be null. Um, so we need to send all the information about Bob. So that's the first thing you need to know. You also need to consider that this would be a UI somehow. And if you saw this as a UI, it would be, maybe it would have a first name field. That would be Bob, you could change. Last name, you could change Dylan, right? So you would have all the information in the UI that you were able to change, if that makes sense for you. And the last thing you want to do is kind of change something, right? So I changed this into Bingo Street instead of Bungo Street. And now the final thing, a put request, if we look at our code, a put request needs to get an ID as the final parameter, right? So we're going to add that by putting in a front slash and then the ID up here to our customer. Now let's just put in one for this, this first test right here and try and send. Hopefully I hit my breakpoint and you'll notice I get the ID of one here and the customer also has the ID of one, right? So I should end up just getting an okay back. Let's just try and step over here, step over, step over, and there we go. We get down to the get request, um, sorry, to the okay, and let's just continue and you'll see we get an okay bad. Now, I didn't update the customer, of course, because I haven't added the logic. We'll do that next lesson, but at least I can see the REST request works. I get an HTTP request to my REST API and it knows that these IDs are identical. But let's just say by mistake, I took Bill instead because I, um, yeah, I don't know why, but I put, I put Bill in here by mistake and I expect that it's actually Bob I wanna update. So these IDs don't match now. Let's try and send again. And let's just step over and step over. And now we return a bad request instead. I'll continue. I just want to show you guys we get to this. I'll continue 
and you'll notice that now I'm getting parameter ID and custom ID must be the same, right? So it's just a validation you can do in the request because you don't want to end up updating the wrong person um, inside your database. That would be very bad. So that Bob ends up being Bill, right, and stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you guys this. It's very cool if you send both the ID here and here, then you can make a small validation on the back end. Uh, and I would suggest that you all do that. You could also do it in the logic layer, but why wait until you get to the logic layer since this is already part of the request, I should do it in the actual request. So this is stuff that belongs in the controller validations like this, where we can also do the validation lower in the system just to prepare ourselves for other types of systems. I'll end the video here and next time we'll try and make this work actually so we actually do update our beautiful uh, customer right here. See you next time, have fun.